Welcome to the Marketing Corbett Show, and I am Robert Gatewood, your host. We are here every Friday at 10.30 a.m., bringing you the good of marketing golf. We're not saving souls, you're saving businesses, saving jobs, saving our community. Now, if I happen to save a soul along the way, don't hold that against me. We'll just call that icing on the cake. Now, the mission at Marketing Corbett Show is to build strong businesses in our community so that we can put our people to work. And we do that with business development, job creation, and service. So if you ever find yourself in a business crossroads and not sure which way to turn, just turn on the Marketing Corporate Show because we are on a mission. You can also find the show on the major. All right, I'm Robert Gatewood, and I am here. Glad to be here on another Friday. This April the 14th. Man, it's close to tax day. Luckily, if you uh, have not filed your taxes yet, you don't have to worry about fretting about, uh, what is it, tomorrow, the 15th? I think this year we have until the 18th of April to get your taxes in. And I am, like I said, this is the Marketing Pool, and I'm Robert Gatewood, your host. I am a business developer by trade. I have a company actually called Gatewood Marketing and Web, where we help people in the business space. If you have a business, or if you're trying to start a business, you have these that, that what an entrepreneur bug has bitten you. <laughs> Today, folks, this stuff is not for the weak of heart. So we all need some help because we are all still learning. And what I try to do, I share the information that I have gone at over the years by being a business developer for the past 30 years. And I share this information with you. Now, I'm doing this as a public service, really. You don't have to pay me for this information. I'm not sending you a bill. I'm I'm not asking you to join anything. This is part of my mission, my purpose, my raison d'etre, my reason for being. And I'm glad to be here to do that. Uh, I'm actually a uh, adjunct professor also at Prince George's Community College. And I've been a busy camper this week. Matter of fact, yesterday, I can't believe I did this myself. I had two courses at two different places on the same day. So I was here in Largo, did a course with the uh, PSCE uh, it's an organization that through the Prince George's Community College, we talked about uh, we talked about digital marketing. Then I left here and went over to National Harbor <laughs> through the Employed Prince George's, where we talked about networking and how to make that effective for your business. So I'm doing this as a service, and I hope you all are taking heed. I mean, whether you get the information from me or somebody else, you need to get this information because it's important if you plan to succeed. As a matter of fact, today my sermon is going to be about ways to succeed in business, how to avoid business failure. And I'm taking this information. This is not just information I'm pulling out of the sky. Like I said, I've been doing this for almost 30 years. And so I take all this information that I have garnered from working with a variety of clients in practically every industry under the sun. And I'm going to take some of the corners, things that have been proven to work that you should be doing to make sure you're not one of these business failures because we have too many business failures in our community. The chances of being successful in our community, in business, is slim to begin with. So if you have the information out here, let's go ahead and take advantage of it. I also written a couple of books, one called Played in Fool, and another book called Smarter Than the Boss. So yeah, I've been at this for a minute and I work with the Small Business Administration uh, through the 8A program. So I have a couple of receipts. But my main, my biggest receipt is helping companies grow. And I have a long list of successful companies that have been working with me and vice versa. So let's get this show on the road. Um, we got some news items we're going to talk about later on. And we are also into the month of April. Um, let's see, I like to look at what's, what this, uh, this website on the line called the Spruce. They give these uh, account down or what what day of the month it is and how it applies to the month of April. Well, today is the International Moment of Laughter Day. What's not to like about that, right? And it's also, man, they got a day for everything now. A look up at the sky day. What are you talking about, Willis? I think some days we can just kind of pass on. <laughs> we, don't, we have to do everything, but there is a look up at the sky day and National Dolphin Day. Remember that, 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 that uh, dolphin used to have a show, I think Flipper or something. But anyway, welcome again to the show. Got a lot going on. Also, we want to, um, we have our business directory. 
Marketing Pulpit Business Directory. You can get it by going to marketingpulpit.com and click, uh, click on the link to save directory. There's a banner also on the right side. Man, and it is blowing up. I was shocked when I went in this morning. I was, Wait a minute. Look at these folks signing up. And I said, as I said, I was going to give everybody who signed up for the free version, I was going to give them an upgrade if they did it in the month of March. So that means if you sign up for the free version, you get a few little you get listening in the, in, the, in the directory. But when you go to the next level, your name comes up on the home page. You can put your events in the e directory. You can put your products on the e -direct directory. A bunch, a bunch of goodies. So people have <laughs> jumped on this thing and kind of threw me off. I'm going to read quickly some of the names that have joined the directory this week. Uh, the Balloon Maven out of, um, let's see, with Bowie, Maryland. She does the balloons. So if you have like an event coming up, whether it's government, whether it's private industry, and you want a big balloon disp display, we have the Balloon Maven. We have Thomas Kendall, Kincaid Studios out of, um, that's out of California. What is that? Uh, Morgan Hill, California. We have Integrated Health Solutions out of Oakland Park, Illinois. We have Fence Masters out of Chicago Heights, Illinois. We have Berg Home Improvements out of, uh, let's see, out of it's Illinois also. We have Taxes and All. Uh, they do uh, tax resolutions and tax returns out of Greenbelt, Maryland. We have NWI Print Pro out of, uh, let's see, that's in Crown Point, Indiana. And we have a lot of law firms been joining up here. Let's see, we have a few law firms. I'm gonna quickly read this, man. Okay, these folks threw me off. You have been really joining this directory. And while I'm looking for this, go ahead to mpi.bz and get your name in the directory. We have the web address uh, scrolling across the screen on the um, on the uh, on the screen if you're tuning in online. Uh, let's see, Joseph Hall uh, Law Firm out of uh, Aurora, California. Uh, Sverdals Law Firm out of Chicago, and let's see, Kraselman Burton and Associates out of Chicago. So we have quite a few people joining this directory. So go in there. I'm going to make. All right, I know I said. Last week was going to be the last time I'm going to give out this free upgrade. I'm going to give you one more chance. Go to mpi.bz. Put your name in the directory. When I see it come through, I'm going to give you a free upgrade if you do it today. And don't be sitting around a, a week or two from now, a month from now, saying when this thing is really blown up and we, those fees kick in, you're going to be wishing you we have a FOMO, fear of missing out. <laughs> Go ahead and do it today. Go to mpi.bz. Thank you also to our sponsor, BLE Executive Suites. They have the three locations in Largo. They have one in National Harbor, and they have one in College Park, which is a hub zone, helping those people in the business space. We bring so many resources to the table here at the Marketing Pool Pit Show. If you are a business owner or you know someone who's in business, you need to tell them to tune in. Don't be left out here struggling. You're not in this alone. This is not easy. Matter of fact, it's hard. <laughs> But you want it to be hard because we call that barriers to entry. You know, get the resources. I just spent all day trying to give you some of this stuff free. Spend some money, some cost. The wrong you have to spend a buck every now and then. All right, let's talk about some of the items in the news. Man, I tell you, this this news has just gotten out of hand here. Uh, I hate bringing some of these things. Uh, we had another shooting. What is wrong with people? What is wrong with our congressmen? What is wrong with our legislative body that they can't do something about these mass shootings? We've had two mass shootings in the last week. We had another one at a bank. This past uh, over in what was it, in Louisville. Guy goes in there, former employee shoots up the place. You're bringing these AR-15s, and then we have our Congress people. Oh, we give you thoughts and prayers. They, they'll lower the flag at the half mast and go back to business as usual. I'm going to tell you something, people. There, there is something irrational about this. That, that's why I know I'm pretty sure that there is an ulterior motive why they're not taking these guns off, or at least trying to control them. I think they have some kind of master plan up their sleeve. It doesn't make sense. Kids are being murdered in their desk in school, and we as a civilized society can't put an end to it. Something is wrong there, ladies and gentlemen. What else is happening in the news? Well, let's see. Teachers, you know, teachers have always been one of my favorite group of people. I'm not sure about this particular teacher. Angel Footman, 
she is charged with contributing to the delinquency of a matter. She was having like a fight. <laughs> what do you call those things? Fight cages in her classroom. She's having the kid to duke it out. Duke it out in the class. And I mean, they're planning the fights and the teacher would say, all right, she would actually lay down the ground rules. 30 seconds, no screaming, no yelling, no phones. She would say to the students before the fight started. Well, we give her credit. She did have some rules, so you have to find some kind of silver lining in this cloud. It really makes no sense. Where's what has happened to people since this pandemic? I call it um, lockdown itis. People, people lost their mind during this pandemic. A man shot a couple at McDonald's drive through during an argument because their order was taking too long. Have you ever been in the line at McDonald's or Chick fil A or Taco Bell or someplace? And it's not your fault. You sitting there with your money in your hand, you ordered like your your chicken chalupa and your uh, and your uh, what that drink you call it, not a Sprite. Uh, but anyway, you ordered your drink and you were ready to go. But something happened in the machine. Either the machine broke down, they ran out of ribbon. The person, there's a new person they're trying to train, and you see the folks behind you just steaming, and you want to say, "It's not me. I'm," <laughs> but you can't. So. I'm not sure that's the case, what happened here, but this guy got out of the car, went up to the folks who were in line and started screaming at him. Resulted in a fight. Somebody ended up getting shot. I'm pretty sure that that can be very frustrating. I've been behind some folks. I never thought about shooting anybody, but I can understand the frustration. But folks, there are better ways to do this. You can get out the car and go in line and place your order. You can, there are several ways to handle this other than shooting a person. Now, here's an interesting story here. This is this really right out of the Bazaro land. They, they, this new service called Turo, where you can you can rent your car out to strangers, almost like an Airbnb for cars. But this guy rented out his car to this lady. She went and sold the darn car on Craigslist. <laughs> now he had a tracking device on the car, so he followed the car to some little old lady's house. He gets to the house, the car's on it's on blocks, some wheels are off, <laughs> some wheels are missing, and he has, hey, what's up? How do you get? Why you didn't turn my car back in? And she said, well, I bought this car. Well, it turns out the scam will stay ahead of you. One thing, folks, on this technology, you have to be aware that the tech, the, the, the thieves, <laughs> the bad guys, this technology, like these ride chairs and these two rows, and it's like a field day. You can, they don't have to go look for the, your victim down. Just bring them to you. And that is, wow. So anyway, we're going to take a quick break here coming up in a second. But don't you miss this next segment. We're going to talk about how you can stay in business and not be one of those statistics of people who are going out of business. So don't you go anywhere. You hang on. We're going to be right back in a minute. This is the rock. This is the marketing pool. with your Robert Gatewood, your host. And we'll be back in a minute. Welcome to the Marketing Pulpit Show, and I am Robert Gatewood, your host. We are here every Friday at 10.30 a.m., bringing you the good of marketing gospel. We're not saving souls, we're saving businesses, saving jobs, saving our community. Now, if I happen to save a soul along the way, don't hold that against me. We'll just call that icing on the cake. Now, the mission at Marketing Pulpit Show is to build strong businesses in our community so that we can put our people to work. And we do that with business development, job creation, and service. So if you ever find yourself in a business crossroads and not sure which way to turn, just turn on the Marketing Corporate Show. All right, we are back. We are back. This is the Marketing Pool. Big Show. I'm Robert Gatewood, your host, and we are here every Friday at 10.30 a.m. bringing you the good marketing gospel. I'm just having a little sip of coffee over here. I'm trying to cut back. Man, but I tell you, nothing like a good old cup of coffee in the morning. What I'm trying to do, some days I have the cup because you're not a habit. 
you got something in your hand, you drink it. I put water in here, I'm trying to get my water intake up. <laughs> I'm not a spring chicken anymore. See little gray hairs under my face here? I didn't have these when I started this show a few years ago. But anyway, they said that's supposed to be the style now and grow some little stubble under your face. I'm just doing what's comfortable to me because I get I'm tired of shaving. Anyway, welcome back to the show. We we uh want to thank uh let's recognize some folks who are tuning in this morning. And I really appreciate your tuning in. Um uh, see Mr. Gerald Brown, the greatest plumber in town. He's a regular uh, listener of the show. We appreciate him. Uh, also attorney Bradley Thomas. He's an intellectual property attorney, he's a politician, got a lot of things going on in the community. He's a great guy. And we have uh, Platinum, the comedian, once again. Great people tuning in. I see Sheldon Smith. Matter of fact, I talked to Sheldon yesterday. He's a regular listener, and he's trying to do some things with his business. And thank you again, Sheldon, for tuning in. Thank you very much, my brother. And so I see some more people that are tuning in, and I won't see your name until you make a comment but i see the, the the lines are really full thank you again for tuning in and thank you for making this show the very popular show that it is i see beverly hammonds thank you for tuning in and everybody else who's tuning in to the show thank you thank you thank you i appreciate you now let's get the word out and get even more people in here all right and then sheldon i didn't forget about you man i've been busy i've been running i'm doing these two classes a day Whew, man I been... remember i'm not 25 anymore wait wait all right, let's see here. What else we talking about? Let's talk about this, this sermon for today. Now, I do a, a show, a sermon every every week, and I get it. It's kind of tied into the marketing pulpit theme, and it's like a like a sermon. Uh, my dad was a minister, Baptist minister. He was in the, did that for a lot of long time, and I named the show Marketing Pulpit to honor him. So one more way to keep the theme going, I do a weekly marketing sermon. And when I bring these topics to you, believe me, they have been vetted, they've been tested, they are tried and they are true. I am not bringing you some experimental something out of a box. I don't have to because I have so much history and such a success record, it's not necessary. I just might as well tell you the things that actually work. Also, don't forget to join the business directory. Go to mpi.bz if you have a business or if you know somebody who's out here struggling or just need some exposure. Tell them this guy Gatewood on the marketing pulpit has a business directory, and right now he's giving out free advertising. Now, you're not going to get that, I'm telling you. Nobody I know, <laughs> anyway. And it's proven to work, and you're getting this free advice as well. And thank you to our, our sponsors, BLE Executive Suites. Call them if you need a business uh, office or a phone number or address. As a matter of fact, I was sitting here yesterday, and somebody called me instead of calling them. See, I hear you talking about this company, BLE. Can you hook me up? So, of course, I connected them to Langston over there, and uh, he took care of them. That's all the emails going back and forth. So we are about solutions, ladies and gentlemen. We are about solutions. Let's talk about our sermon today. Now, I have to talk about this every now and then because of the immense business failure that we see in our community. And somebody's got to tell people what to do <laughs> so that they don't become one of these statistics because business failure hurts. It can be embarrassing. It can damage your reputation. Sometimes you left a trail of broken promises. You had people to turn over all their information to you. They they took you at your word that you were going to be successful. And, and, and next thing you know, you got to go into hiding because your business failed. Let's not let that happen. I'm going to give you some, some, some tips, some proven things that's going to make it less likely for you to go out of business. Number one understand the importance of a custom you need to do everything you can move mountain and earth to make sure you get those customers in the door that's why i'm always preaching about this low threshold approach get them in there and then if you have to upgrade them or upsell them or cross sell them later on get the customer in the door that should be your number one priority sometimes you got to nurture you got to do some things you may have to give away something free we have to give out some information, but get the customer. And once you get them in there, treat them right. Treat them like the valuable asset that they are. Okay? Now, now once you get those customers in there, you need to understand the metrics. The metrics, that means the numbers. What's the cost of the customer and how much money they're going to spend with you once they get in there? Because if you're not taking, watching those numbers, you're going to be out of business and not even realize how close you were to being out of business if you haven't gone already. So you want to make sure your cost per acquisition to get a customer is always going down. Now, sometimes things may go up when you bring in new products, sometimes expansion, but you want to keep, have an idea 
what is a hundred dollars a customer, twenty-five dollars a customer, fifteen cents a customer. You want to know, and when it, it fluctuates, you want to know why. Also, you want to understand the lifetime value, how much they're going to spend with you. Let's say take a year advantage. I mean, for example, if you spend a hundred dollars to get that customer, and they spend a thousand dollars over the course of a year, that's a pretty good deal. So you want to make sure you understand those numbers, at least be aware of them. Okay. Another thing you have to do in business to stay in and to be successful, you have to, you must develop relationships. There is no way around this. I talked last night in my course about stakeholder relationships and you got to build, of course, customer acquisition is important, but you got to get vendors, you got to get suppliers, contractors, employees, uh, government agencies, sometimes community involvement, but you have to build those relationships. Don't spend all of your money and time trying to go after one customer. When sometimes you get a good relationship, that relationship can bring you dozens, in some cases, hundreds of customers. Build those relationships. Make that part of your business strategy. Now, this is another one that's important. You have to keep up with this technology. Don't get left behind. If you're not a technical person, then you need to talk to somebody like myself who understands how it works. Because it's not just a matter of having fancy gadgets and shiny objects. Some of these things will keep your cost down, uh, keep you abreast of technology. Uh, delivery systems, customer acquisition. So technology is not just something for the eggheads. It's for everybody. And you have to keep up. Here's one of my favorites. You have to advertise and you have to do it boldly. Now this is going to be, this will be actually be a, a, what do you call it, a differentiator or a degree of separation between you and many of the cust uh, businesses in your industry. They're playing it safe. Okay. They're like, look, I'm not going to spend my money on this advertising that doesn't work. I'm going to keep it in the bank, dig it hold and put it in the yard or whatever. That's going to put you out of business. Now, some people are afraid to advertise because they're afraid that it's, it hasn't worked for them in the past or they're afraid they're going to not get their money back. That's not a reason not to advertise. What that means is you have to find a way to make it work. And you do that by talking to somebody like myself, who's a seasoned veteran, and we're going to make sure you get those metrics, that your costs are in line and that you get that lifetime value. And it's a process. It's actually called marketing. Um, there's another, um, we have to do this also. You have to continually improve your service. Don't be the same service you were 20 years ago. Sometimes that means up, uh, upgrading uh, technology. Sometimes that means introducing new products. I mean, making existing products better, but you have to be innovative and keep raising the ball, making it better. That same old product you did lunch with a few years ago might not work anymore. Now, here's another one of those must-haves. Get as many testimonies as you can. Because there is a uh, phenomenon in business and in life, really, called uh, the desire to belong or social proof. And that simply means that people see other people doing something, particularly if it's something good and beneficial, they're going to want to do it too. So if they go to your website or if they get your, go to your social media post or get your uh, postcard in the mail and they see all these testimonies, they're going to say, wait, wait a minute, what am I missing out on here? So what you want to do is get testimonies to build that consensus and that social proof. This is a proven tactic that you must embrace in order to be ultimately successful in business. Um, we talked about referral partners. We talked about uh, relationships, but an important part of that is referral partners, people that's going to refer you business. And I am constantly working on this. I'm not going after these one-off sales. I want referral partners and I have quite a few of them and they have really been the determination between my business being flatlined or growing because I believe in partnerships. I want to partner with Radio One, I want to partner with BLE, I want to partner with Prince George's Community College, Bowie Innovation Center, the list goes on and on. I want to build these partnerships and let them send me customers. But to do that, you have to be legitimate, get your certifications, get your training, Make sure your staff is up to date, you're putting out a good quality product, and those partnerships will happen, but you have to make it part of your strategy. Don't just make it nearly willy, okay? I shouldn't have to say this one, but it's important. You have to make money. Now, we go through the industry life cycle of the research, introduction, uh, growth, maturity, and decline. So doing that research and introduction, you might not make money. I mean, you, I mean just because you, you're trying to grow the company. But when you hit that growth cycle, you got to go back to that those metrics I talked about, making sure your cost per acquisition is in line, and your lifetime value. And the difference between the uh, what you're spending and your expenses and so forth and what you take in, 
that's called profit. You have to have some cash in the bank, or you have to have some type of money source. And we, if you're looking for a funder or somebody like that, you might go to the marketing pulpit business directory. You need an accountant. Some of these services out here is going to help you survive this difficulty of trying to stay in business. So we have resources in the community, and I'm happy to share those with you. Now, other thing you have to do, you have to learn to, you learn from your mistakes. You're going to make mistakes, okay? Don't cry. Don't sit around and, and, and mope, moan and groan. Learn. Chalk them up. Heaven knows I've made my share. And every business billionaire out here will tell you the same thing. It's part of the process. Let the process work. Don't mope over it. Get out here, make the adjustments, and move on. Here's one. You have to take some risk. Now, there have to be calculated risks. You can't just be just taking risk for risk's sake. But the, the people that take the risk are the ones that's actually going to win in the end because some of those risks, some of those, like I say, your competitors are not going to be able to take them. But you listen to tr trained and seasoned people like myself who can help you minimize the risk. Okay? Wrapping things up here, keep your customers happy. Keep them happy because they're going to be one of your biggest sources of new customers and new business. And last but not least, you have to give something back. Don't be so afraid to give out some free information, to give out some services, to join organizations. You have to give back. I'm a big believer in reciprocity. You give it out, it will come back. I'm an example of that. I'm always giving away something. And because I've, I've proven this over 30 years, it actually works. So, folks, that's going to wrap it up for today. This is the Marketing Pulpit Show. I'm Robert Gatewood, your host. I'm here every Friday at 10.30 a.m. bringing you the good marketing gospel. And... Don't forget to join the business directory. Go to mpi.bz. I'll be back next week with some topics of interest. And let's support each other. Let's give back and let's make these businesses successful. I will see you next week. And if you want to be successful, you have to do these three things. Do the right thing. Do it at the right time. And you have to do it right. And thank you, Mr. Brown. Let's get out here and get to work. Welcome to the Marketing Pulpit Show, and I am Robert Gatewood, your host. We are here every Friday at 10.30 a.m., bringing you the good of marketing gospel. We're not saving souls, you're saving businesses, saving jobs, saving our community. Now, if I happen to save a soul along the way, don't hold that against me. We'll just call that icing on the cake. Now, the mission at Marketing Pulpit Show is to build strong businesses in our community so that we can put our people to work. And we do that with business development, job creation, and service. So if you ever find yourself in a business crossroads and not sure which way to turn, just turn on the Marketing Corporate Show because we are on a mission. You can also find the show on the major platforms like Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, LinkedIn, and you can find it They have the saying that if you build a better mousetrap, the world they have the saying that if you build a better mousetrap, the world will be the path to your door. Now, that's a notion. So I've seen several instances where people, I mean, just good, hardworking business owners, get caught in this trap of comparing themselves to others. And sometimes they feel like they don't measure up. But they're comparing, we have this apples to orange comparison. Matter of fact, it's more like apple to pineapple. You have to pursue you and what makes you unique and stop this comparison. Now, I must admit this uh, tendency has been exacerbated by the Internet. And you go on the Internet and people, they see other businesses, they see other people doing things, and sometimes they're exaggerating their, their capabilities and their successes. And there's nothing wrong with you know, letting people know you're doing well, but as long as you don't take it to the extreme and showing off. But, that's, but if you're a business owner or somebody watching this and you start to measure yourself against that, it can be a mistake. They have the saying that if you build a better mousetrap, the world will be the path to your door. Now, that's a notion that has been around for a while. And what that pretend is that if you're providing uh, innovative, top-notch services and products that the public will reward you 
they will literally be the path to your door. I mean, how, how can you argue with that? Except it's not just good enough now to have a superior product. Yes, I want you to continue to put out a good product, but what I'm going to ask you to do today is to spend some of that energy, besides putting out a good product, you have to put some energy on getting the world to beat that path to your door. No matter how good your product is, if people don't know about it, they're not coming to your door, and it's certainly not beating the path.